dark money has become political oxygen. It is everywhere, yet it's invisible. Undisclosed donors pouring unlimited funds into causes and candidates they prefer. The 2010 Supreme Court ruling Citizens United opened the floodgates to unlimited outside spending in these elections. And this cycle, there is more than ever. How much? Where is it going? Let's get some answers. Over $162 million in federal political contributions in 2023, and the beat goes on in 2024. Anna Masolia is the editorial and investigations manager at Open Secrets, which tracks all of this. Anna, I saw your report. Uh, at this time, it looks like Democrats are in the lead when it comes to dark money. I don't know that they're bragging about that or anything. But when you look proportionately at declared versus dark money, which is bigger? At this point, we're really seeing a large amount of declared money, but the election is really early and we are on track for a new record. Just that 162 million plus is going just in the first year of the election cycle, puts us on track to beat uh, the 2022 cycle or the 2020 cycle. Every year since 2018, we've seen both dark money benefiting Republicans as well as Democrats and increasingly Democrats this cycle. Uh, that's something that really started to shift around 2018, but that's not saying it's not benefiting both sides at this point. There is a large sum of declared uh, close money as well. We're hitting, we're projected if we are on track with the prior two cycles, which we are uh, projected to hit over $14 billion in spending collectively, which mm. is a large sum. But we really, the real issue here is that we don't know how much money is going into elections that is not disclosed since we're only able to factor in the figures of what is disclosed to the Federal Election Commission, what is disclosed to state campaign finance agencies. And so much of that money, right. not, no, not only do we not know the source of the donors, but we don't know who is actually spending that money and how much. Well, what is your reaction when you hear, like, do you chuckle? Do you roll your eyes when you see all this hype? Biden got 25 mil, Trump is going to get 33 mil, and you know that there is one rich guy who can write a check, nobody knows who it is, but he can change the race and Trump everybody. That's right. And really, we do have some contribution limits when you're looking at the candidates themselves. There are only certain amounts that each individual can actually give to a candidate before hitting those contribution limits. But outside groups like super PACs that can raise and spend unlimited sums of money change the game. And in particular, when those super PACs are not only spending in support of candidates and getting money from individuals whose names those super PACs are legally required to disclose, but also getting money from other groups, such as 501c4 nonprofits that don't disclose their donors, shell companies that may have very little of a trace at all. Um, and that money is going increasingly more into elections, not just direct spending by 501c4s that don't disclose their donors, these dark money groups that are reporting their spending to the FEC, but also routing money through super PACs so that they, they can then spend that money, adding extra layers of insulation between secret donors and the candidates they're benefiting. Real quick, when you say all those uh, letters and numbers, uh, people have a vague idea, I think. And people, you know, they think this is secretive and it's bad and whatever, but it's actually legal. What are the parameters? These dark money groups, they can't actually endorse someone is my understanding, but they can, they can support certain issues. That's right. So in certain cases, dark money groups of their 501c4s, you can actually explicitly promote a candidate. They can spend and say vote for, vote against a candidate, so long as it's not their primary purpose. 501c4s are supposed to exist for social welfare purposes, but that is um, a very, they're very flexible rules that the Internal Revenue Service has around what those groups can actually do. And in many cases, they may spend on both that express advocacy, saying vote for, vote against a candidate or the equivalent. But more commonly, we are seeing spending on what are called issue advocacy ads or electioneering communications, which are only required to be disclosed to the Federal Election Commission if they are on the short period before an election and only through really those traditional sources like TV or radio. Online is an even more unregulated. And these are ads that really can say that say great things about a candidate, paint a very positive or negative picture of them. But as long as they don't say vote for, vote against, or that equivalent, there's so much you can do with promoting people to uh, vote, vote for a candidate without ever hitting that line. And right. the vast majority of that is not disclosed. With just a few seconds left here, though, you cannot officially coordinate between these groups and a campaign. If they were to violate that, is the FEC actually going to enforce the law? That's a good question. Right now, the FEC at least does have a quorum, so they are able to pursue investigations and any type of enforcement action. But even if a group is um, very explicit with that, it's oftentimes uh, many years before we really see the consequences of their actions. And there are many ways that mm. even though in the letter of the law, groups that like super PACs and dark money groups are not supposed to coordinate with candidates, there are a variety of activities they can do, such as having candidates as guests at their events that really uh, toe the line of that. Mm. In the, we get, in Some loopholes in there.
they know him, but you know him too. So Anna Masolia with Open Secrets, thank you so much for being here tonight. We appreciate it. More Americans are